Yeah, well, we heard stories before of before the tornado hit the top of the hill there, it hit over there, what, the Lady Jane Mines? Is that what it is? Yeah. It sucked all the water out of their pond up into the air and then dropped it back down in. <coughs> now, that's just what, of course, I just heard a story the other day that <coughs> a lady asked me, what about the kid that got sucked out the wind and blowed back in and sucked out the wind and blowed back in? I, ah, well, that must have been the tornado, the kid going in and out the window. <laughs> oh, that's Kenny. <laughs> Yeah, tornadoes can sometimes pick up uh, frogs or fish out of uh, lakes and deposit them further down the road where there's no water and it just starts raining frogs or fish. Uh, that sort of stuff's been, uh, was was just myth for a long time, but it's been fairly substantiated that tornadoes can do that sort of thing. Well, the, that house in Penfield, and they call it the infamous geranium, um, that it picked the house up and, and uh, completely took it off of its foundation. It had two steps going in onto the porch and on the step was a four inch potted geranium. It was still there. Yeah, they can do a lot of strange things like that. I don't know if Henry's got any video of this, but I think one of the reasons that that sort of stuff happens, they've just realized recently, is that the tornado itself often has multiple little tiny tornadoes that call border seeds inside it spinning around. And so those are what do a lot of the damage. So whether or not one of those little ones hits you or not can cause that sort of thing. Yeah, the, the wind can cancel out between between them and cause a, a calm, a relative calm. Right, right. And so one hmm. house is, is swept uh, off the foundation and one or two doors down, it's still standing. Relative little damage. So you guys had to do it again, didn't you, about... Nothing clock at night, had to go through it all over again with the second storms? No. No, it never rained no. after that. Really? No. Just, just no. Had no. Just had about 10 o'clock and got gorgeous. Because clear sky, after the, the stars mm -hmm. come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were sitting out on the porch just looking up and just sat there and enjoyed the rest of the night. I mean, <laughs> nothing happened. It was beautiful after that. Now Henry Henry says uh, when he came up here shortly after that he remembered the smell of all the sap in the air. Is that something you guys remember? Yeah, I do remember that. I do remember that. Well, you guys called to it. Yeah, yeah. we called to it. Because uh, there, there was another guy that was, that was bringing his boy out to, uh, to go camping with us. And he made it. He drove out as far as uh, where the road was up to the uh, superintendent's office. And then we walked from there down down through down to where we were. And when he got down closer to where we were, he hollered for us and we answered me, come on down and then that's when my boy said, I we wanna go home right now <laughs> And then that's when the two so of us the three of us and we went home with him. We crawled back back through all of those trees under and over and through. And it was raining then. Power lines? Yeah. We went through them power lines too, somehow. Wow. The high tension power lines. How long after the storm? Was it? That wasn't that wasn't very long after it. It was raining still. Yeah, it was still raining. That was eight thirty quarters, about an hour or so. Was it? Well, probably yeah. Probably a little bit after. It. And he came to Dawson and, and took us home. And as like I said, he, he, they, they stayed the rest of the night then in that cabin. Was there a lot of thunder and lightning with the storm beforehand or not? I don't remember much. I remember some afterwards, but not, yeah, we'll not much before. before. And afterwards, when we were walking through, I remember more lightning than thunder when we were walking through the down trees back to get out. Yeah, there was a lot of, I remember there was a lot of lightning at night when the storms came through at State College. Mm -hmm. It was a tremendous amount of lightning. Of course, at that time of the day, you see it clearly. You know, yeah. <laughs> so how fast did it travel, the tornado? How fast was it moving? Uh, it covered uh, 69 miles in an hour and a half. So it was uh, so 69 hour and a half. That's my math is bad here. About 20, let's say 25 
a mile an hour. When they came over that ridge, it was like right on top of you. Because like, you see all these videos of the tornadoes out west and they can see them from miles and miles away. Mm -hmm. You guys can... No, it was like, no, we no. come over the hill and it was right no, on top of the ridge. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah. Came, no, that hill was right in front of the cabin. Yeah. It could have come down the top of that It was hill. that cabin all surrounded by trees back then. Yes, yes it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you could hardly see it. You could hardly see it from the road. Right. Yeah. And then when you walked back outside, it was. It was off. like it was completely <laughs> cleared. Everything was laying down all over the place, yeah. all which way. Yeah. yeah, that's one of one of the problems with the tornadoes in this part of the country is you don't have visibility like they do out west where they chase them, so you wouldn't be able to see it coming. Especially too, this one was so large that, I mean, by the time you could see it, it wouldn't have looked like a classic tornado. It would have just been a huge. A huge wedge of clouds coming at you. And it took, like these leaves you see here right now, green, real soft. Yeah. It just took them and just dried them completely out. Really? Yes, it took them and dried them completely out to where when you hold them in your hand, it's just like holding in the fall. You take a leaf. Yeah, and they crunch up. Right, all crunched up. That's what the green leaves were. Okay. Because my truck was completely full of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Is your truck the blue one? That yes, that's my truck. That was my truck. Yeah. Throughout it, all the little wee green pieces of leaves. Yeah. All dried up. I'd say the CCC boys built a pretty good cabin. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretty amazing. I think they said the reason for it was was what the eight sided because it was eight sided. That's one of the reasons. That's what I heard was one of the yeah. reasons that it was withstood it. Yeah. <laughs> and there was claims that the, it, when it got to those big uh, pine trees, that it kind of slowed down or something like that. Yeah. Which I don't, yeah. really, I don't quite believe. Protected that. you maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> they said it was because the building was eight sided and it just bounced yeah. off the sides. Most of the trees around the cabin were, that, and they really? were uprooted instead of being snapped off. Yeah. They were just uprooted. Well, it's kind of more swampy down there too, though, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. yeah. Well, I remember going to the top of the, the hill down in Defenseville, right above Lady Jane Mine. Yeah. I remember pulling up there the next day with my dad. Yeah. And it just looked like somebody ran a giant lawnmower down there. Mm -hmm. It just yeah, looked yeah. like they cleared it out for a power line. Mm -hmm. It's like the trees all broke off. They they didn't. Yeah. They didn't bend. It. They broke. They just broke. What did pull broke? You you, you, you couldn't some, imagine some, it. Some of those pictures you can see the the stumps that were left when it broke off, and it just looks like a half mile wide combine went down to it. Yeah. <coughs> Cut we had our boss took us on an aerial view of it. Um, what about a month afterwards, after the foliage had all died, and it just looked like a circular pattern from the trees. That's just how they lay. They just lay. 